G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. Well, we're going to start off with a little bit of a disappointing story, unfortunately. So, it seems that there are people over in India who are going around trying to sell uh, fake crypto wallets uh, to the more wealthy people over in India. Now, you know, to anyone who's listening, please be careful. I don't want anyone to lose any money, uh, and especially to scams, you know, like... You know, people work hard for their money. You and you know, and I've worked hard for my money and anyone else who's investing in stuff has worked hard for their money. The last thing you want to do is put into something that's just an outright legitimate scam and lose everything. So basically what this uh, article goes on to say is there's been people uh, going around India and promoting that they've, you know, created this new crypto wallet and getting people to uh, put their money into these crypto wallets. And it's just an outright scam. As soon as you put your money in, all of a sudden it's disappeared and then it's gone and you can't find these people anymore. You know, no communication. Now this is happening in India at the moment, but please don't think that that's the only place that's going to happen. Now, Google Play and App Store and all of that, there's fake uh, crappy uh, wallets being put on there. They're, they're not even real ones. Now, you know, it's not Google and App Store's uh you know, fault that these are happening. They don't know. They can't fully investigate everything that goes on there. I'm sure they do a little bit of background on it, but just be careful. If you are going to download a wallet or something, go to uh, the legit website, you know, and kind of get your information from there. Or when you go into Google Play and App Stores, make sure that there's reviews and, you know, you check the stars. And if it's the five star one, it's probably going to be the legit one. That's not a guarantee, but that'll probably be the legit one. And if it's, you know, something that, you know, like Exodus wallet or something and it's only got one star well then it's probably not the real Exodus wallet the real one should have a few more so just be very very careful you know wherever there's money there's always going to be scams uh, and particularly in the crypto industry when there's a bull market they're, they're only going to get bigger now if you know as more people catch on that there's money to be made in cryptocurrencies more and more scams are going to show up and it'll be wallets and you know platforms you know you know, some of this uh, DeFi yield farming stuff I'm very dubious on and I'm not throwing shade at any particular platform, but I'd be very, very careful with some of that stuff, you know. You know, farming from one place to another, to another, to another, you know, using the liquidity. I just, I could be wrong, but it just feels a little bit shady, so be very careful. Now, I'm, I'm invested in DeFi, don't get me wrong. There's specific platforms that I really, really like. Uh, I like Carver, I like Synthetics, uh, I like Ren, I like Aave. Uh, but look, that's not to say that they couldn't be scams, and I'm, I definitely hope they're not because I've put money into them. But, you know, there's DeFi is the thing at the moment, and there's just new platform after new platform after new platform, and they don't have any history. You know, Ren's been around for a little while, Synthetics has been around for quite a while, Carver's fairly new. So they're still, you know, got to test the waters. Aave, that used to be ETH Lend, so it's been around for a while and was revamped and things like that. So just be careful. There's definitely plenty of scams out there and I don't want anyone to be outright scammed. That's, you know, that shouldn't be what this, um, the world is about in general, but particularly the crypto industry. It's a shame that there's things out like that, out there like that, that'll really ruin it for everyone. All right, this is another interesting article I found. So... After Bitcoin betrayal, Goldman Sachs is suddenly betting big on crypto and blockchain. So Goldman Sachs, along with Wall Street banking rival JP Morgan, has a mixed history with Bitcoin. After cheering Bitcoin's epic 2017 rally to around 20,000 in 2017, Goldman Sachs betrayed Bitcoin believers in May this year when the bank's top analyst revealed a BuzzFeed-style five reasons why they didn't think Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies should be considered uh, an asset class in a much hyped investor call. <laughs> so all of a sudden, now that there's money to be made, yep, they're back on the bandwagon. And look, it's more than just they're getting back on the bad bandwagon. Cryptocurrencies, whether people are ready for it or not, it is the future. Digital currencies, digital cash, that is how it's going to be from here on. And there's another story that's going to go on to demonstrate that, but I'll continue. Now, Goldman Sachs has appointed a new global head of digital assets and, following in JP Morgan's footsteps, is reportedly, reportedly exploring the possi possibility of creating its own blockchain based answer to Bitcoin. That is exactly why I'd never invest in it. They cannot remake another Bitcoin. Bitcoin was made for the masses, it wasn't made for one person. 
And that's why these will be what a lot of people refer to as shit coins, because this coin will serve Goldman and Sachs only. It'll have very little use case uh, for the average punter. It'll be just like the current fiat system. It'll be printed to a billion and oblivion and all the rest of it. So I'm not saying you couldn't use this coin. You could, but it won't be really any good. It'll just be another fiat. That's all it's going to be. It's not something that's going to you know, go on to make you money. They're not going to create something that they don't have control of. Sorry, not this guy, but that they don't have control of and can't make money off. That's, you know, they're trying to create another Bitcoin. You can't create another Bitcoin. There's one Bitcoin. And if they were to make a coin, it'd be self-serving and that'd be it. It wouldn't be good to anyone else really, other than a, you, you know, a form of transfer. But for an investment uh, point of view, it'd be absolutely shit. <laughs> Sorry, gotta be, gotta be up front, gotta be real and honest. It would be shit. It's just gonna be another normal dollar. And the dollar other than, you know, we have, you know, we're paid in it, it's not really good for investment. It's been losing money, you know, year after year after year. Uh, and these coins will do exactly the same. They're not going to make a, a deflationary coin. They're going to make an inflationary coin. Anyway, let's go on. This is the story that I was really wanted to get to. So New York financial regulators green lights 10 tokens for custody. Now, there was one interesting one in there, but basically what it goes on to say is that these are the coins that they are going to uh, regulate that can be held in custody for people, so by banks and things like that. So Bitcoin number one, of course. Ethereum, it's the number two coin, of course. Bitcoin Cash, you know, it'll be interesting to see whether Bitcoin Cash can sort of last, but uh, it, it does have a use case. It's a, you know, it works faster than the normal Bitcoin. Litecoin, so again, it's one of the older OG coins that's been around, so maybe that's, you know, meaning it's going to, you know, hang around uh, long term. It's basically Bitcoin, but uh, a little bit faster and there's more of them. Uh, and it usually is the uh, first to trial, you know, new things, SegWit and uh, Lightning Network and things like that. Binance USD, obviously the biggest uh, exchange out there. The Gemini dollar, so obviously pretty big as well. Pax Gold, so a cryptocurrency that's backed by real gold. Uh, Paxo Standard Token, and I think that's... Uh, isn't PayPal going to get onto something like this? They're thinking about using that. Now also XRP and Ethereum Classic, which I found was interesting. I mean, Ethereum Classic's had 251% attacks in the last sort of week, so I, I did find that interesting. But this basically legitimizes cryptocurrencies in general. It is now a regulated uh, industry where not that long ago it wasn't. And now banks and you know hedge funds and all sorts of things like that are now going to take custody of that kind of stuff. Now all I would say is, you know, if you have half an ounce of knowledge of how to use computers, you shouldn't need to use anyone to hold your uh, yeah, basically crypto for you should be able to find, you know, something like a Trezor or, a, you know, the, there's other new wallets coming out, but particularly the Ledger, you know what I mean? Put, put it on that and, you know, that would be my uh, suggestion of how I would, you know, look after my cryptocurrencies. Having it with these guys, they're just going to make the real gains and they're going to, you know, pass on bug rule to you there'll be a fee for doing it but you know then again at least they will invest it for you and they'll pay dividends you won't have to go and sort of trade and all the rest of it so you know there is some upside to it you know particularly for the older generation if they just couldn't wrap their heads around you know how to crypt cryptocurrencies work and all the rest of it and you know sending it and receiving it and all the rest of it you know it's still not the easiest thing to use cryptocurrencies at the moment so I guess for you know older generations and people who aren't definitely aren't tech tech savvy and maybe even people with you know some learning disabilities and things like that intellectual disabilities this probably would be the best way for them so you know it, it's not all bad but it is good to see that you know we're now we're in the mainstream now not the main mainstream this is still very early days and we got a long way to go but there's 10 of them, 10 right there that they've decided that banks and hedge funds and things like that, you know, can hold on to. And look, there's going to be more in the future. This won't be the end of it. But also, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, whether, you know, Litecoin, it's been around for a long time and I like Litecoin, but it hasn't had a whole lot of 
uh, adoption sort of happening for it. I mean, you know, they're talking about working with Atari and, you know, they do have a fair few uh, ATMs, I think, getting around in Korea and things like that. So it's not like they're not doing anything, you know, and they are working on Mimble Wimble and all the rest of it. But yeah, Litecoin, you know, I hope that it sticks around. Uh, it's one of the older ones. Again, it's up there with Bitcoin as an OG. But Ethereum Classic, you know, again, with the 51% of tax, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But cryptocurrencies is now regulated. It is legit. Uh, it's not this fake thing that's going to go to zero and disappear. Regulators, they just wouldn't let that happen, period. That's not to say that there couldn't be massive dumps, though. Let me just say that. All right, so quickly, we'll go have have a look. Oh, we literally just missed it. That was a $12,000. There we go. It's at $12,000. So we can see it's really testing this kind of uh, level of resistance here at the moment, which is right on that $12,000 mark. Now, this is on the daily candle, so it's just been bouncing around, you know, ranging there for quite a while. But let's take it down and let's have a look at the four hour, see what's happening on there, if it gives us any better indications. All right, so the four hour, nah, not really, kind of much the same. You know, it bounces up, drops down, ranges in, gets back up, drops down, it's bouncing up, and then it's really just kind of stuck here around that $12,000 level. So it'll be interesting to see sort of what happens. You know, we've had such a good pump up there, and then we had this big sell-off, uh, and then we've sort of pumped up. You know, I see us probably trading sideways for a little bit longer. But look, it's hard to say. I'm no savant, I'm no oracle. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. I definitely can't read the future. But again, this move right here uh, was pretty big. So it just makes me think that we're probably going to trade sideways a little bit for a while. And again, I don't really like using the hourlies and you know the minutes and things like that. Because uh, again, I'm following the bigger trend. I'm not, you know, I'm not day trading. Uh, and that's really where you're going to use the 15 minute, four minute candle, sorry, 15 minute, four hour candles and things like that. So again, we had this big rise and then we had a bit of a sell off. Now we've risen up back to the top of basically where it quickly sold off. So I kind of expect us to maybe travel sideways for a little bit. How long, I don't know. And it'll be interesting to see what we happen, what happens when we hit this kind of $12,500 level. So I, I think this is definitely, uh, well, it's not that I think it is a sort of previous resistance uh, from back. Hopefully this won't take too long to load up. No, of course it's going to now that I need it. But anyway, we can see uh, where well you can't see from here. Hopefully. No, it's not going to work. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. So we can see this has been a kind of resistance uh, and support. It's been a little bit of support and resistance, but it's used it a couple of times here. So this, it's that psychological barrier of, barrier of whether we can just simply break through it or we reach up, tap it, maybe fall back down to you know some previous sort of uh, support. So back down here again, maybe around the $11,600, $500 range, but you know possibly even you know come back down to retest that ten and a half thousand dollar level before we make another attempt at it but once we get through that kind of green level really there's only a little bit at sort of thirteen four sorry fourteen thousand dollars and then after that we have you know and we were only here a couple of times so around that kind of seventeen thousand dollars and then after that well we've basically got that nineteen and a half nineteen thousand seven hundred dollar level as the last bit of you know, previous history that we can go off. And then after that, it's all just uncharted territory. And I've said that before. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the next few weeks and particularly coming up to around November. You know, we got the elections happening over in America. You know, what's going to happen with Trump and Biden? And then what's their plans? You know, whether they're going to continue to pump more money into the economy, you know, to keep propping it up. Or is someone going to go, nah, it's time to pull back and we've got a penny pinch because that will have big effects on all the markets and you know if there if there's a big major sell-off in the stock market you can guarantee there's going to be a big sell-off in bitcoin as well that's just the way it is all markets will be exactly the same you know but it'll be about which one gets affected the worst and where people see the safest uh, place to park some of their money because you know few people will park all their money in just sort of one thing you know they'll, they'll hedge their bets you know some will be put into cash 
you know, by some people, some will be put into gold, others will be put into, you know, wherever they think is the safest. And Bitcoin could be one of them. But you can guarantee that there's people invested in Bitcoin now that they need their, you know, kind of weekly cash flow. Uh, and if things are dumping, they'll be quick to dump uh, the Bitcoin that they, you know, as their liquid kind of part, uh, you know, they might have some long term holds. But yeah, again, just expect that if stocks take a big tumble, uh, Bitcoin will take a bit of a tumble as well. Whether it takes a big one or not, I don't know. But anyway, I don't want to take up too much more of your time today. Just a quick little look at some interesting uh, stories I found uh, and just a bit of a market analysis as well. Like I said, I'm not really sure what it's going to do. My gut feeling is we're going to travel sideways for a little bit and possibly even more a bit of a retracement, you know, a correction from this big move. But, you know, we could go straight up to 12500 and then, you know, quickly make our way up to that kind of thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 level. But anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on those gain trains and I'll see you next time.